I'm Kirk Evans, Principal Premier Field Engineer with Microsoft. In this section, we'll look at using the SharePoint 2013 Chrome Control. The Chrome Control enables you to use the navigation header of a specific SharePoint site right into your app without needing to register a server library or use a specific technology or tool. We use the Chrome Control to style our app to look like the host web that it is associated with. If we are building an app that will be broadly distributed, such as through the Office Marketplace, there's no way to know ahead of time what the styles will be for that particular customer site on their SharePoint site. So you want your app to look like it's part of their SharePoint site, and that's exactly what the Chrome Control allows us to do. We use the styles from the host web in our app. The core of this technology is a JavaScript library that your app will use to communicate with an endpoint to retrieve the styles of the host web. It not only allows us to style the app, but also to add additional navigation nodes to the app pages. Something that's kind of different in the app development world than traditional SharePoint development is that some of the things we're used to, like a navigation infrastructure, really isn't present in the app. We'll need to provide that, and we can provide our own navigation, or we can do so by using the Chrome control. We use the Chrome control by adding a reference to the sp.ui.controls.js JavaScript file that is present in the Layouts folder in the SharePoint site. We reference that in the same manner that you would reference any other JavaScript library. You can either include a copy of the script, or you can reference the script from the Layouts folder. In this example, we pass in the host URL for the host web, and then the Chrome control uses that information to call back into the SharePoint site to get the style sheet. Within your app, we define a div that contains the Chrome control, and within the control, we set up a number of different options. This slide shows several options, such as the help page URL that gives a link to a page designated for help, an icon for your app, a title, and additional links used for settings in the app. So we use these settings to provide additional capabilities to the app within the div that contains the Chrome control. Let's take a look at an example of using the Chrome control. Chrome control is used to brand a SharePoint app similar to the hosting web. So we'll start by creating a new project app for SharePoint 2013 and this will be called our Chrome app provide a friendly name, a URL for debugging, and the hosting type for this will be SharePoint hosted app. Visual Studio creates the project structure for us in the background. We'll start by adding the Chrome control to the list of scripts that we have inside our project. So we'll right click and say add an existing item. And the item that we'll add will be under C, program files, common files, Microsoft shared, web server extensions, 15 template layouts. Under, underneath there, there will be a JavaScript file, so let's filter on JavaScript, and then we'll scroll down here to find sp.ui.controls.js is the guy that we're looking for. So we'll add that into our project, and now that becomes part of our project. We could either reference it here, or we could dynamically download it from the uh, from the host web as well. Let's go into app.js. You can see that there's some script that's already been included here as an example. We're going to remove this script, and we're going to create our own implementation here. But we'll leave the jQuery document ready function as an example. So. When the DOM is fully uh, is fully ready, then what we'll do is this this uh, jQuery function will be called to let us know that the DOM is now ready to be manipulated. So this will be the entry point for our code. We'll use the jQuery method get script to download a uh, a script file, and that script file will be at scripts, and that will be our jQuery or sp.ui.controls.js. And when that is fully downloaded, then we'll have a function that will be called called render Chrome. So we'll need to provide that implementation. A render Chrome method will uh, provide the options for the Chrome control. So we'll set up a JavaScript object called options. And inside the options uh, object, we'll now start to set up some properties of the up. The first option here will be our app icon URL, and that will be 
images app icon.png. Next we'll set up the app title and that will be Chrome Control App, the app help page URL and we'll point that to home.html. Remember that whenever the app is called here that some query string information was passed to us such as the um, the host web URL and the app web URL. So we'd like to be able to grab that information and append it as the query string for that home.html. So, I'm sorry, not home, won't help. There we go, help.html. So we'll append document. Dot, and now since we have the document, we want to access the URL. There we go, Just access the URL. And now from the URL, we, uh, we want to split based on the question mark that is the uh, the marker for the query string. So everything to the left is the resource and everything to the right is the query string. So we'll split based on the query string character and now we only want everything on the right of that character. So now we have the app help page URL defined. The next thing is we want to set up some settings links. And these links will show whenever um, whenever we go to the settings icon. And to do that, this will be an array of links. So we'll set up an array. And then each, uh, each link is defined as a JavaScript object that has two properties. The first property will be the link URL. And link URL here we'll say is account.html. And we'll use the same uh, trick here for the document URL split. And the second property for this will be the display name for the link. And the display name here will be account settings. We'll want two links, so we'll just copy that and define a new link. And the new link here, instead of account, we'll have this to be contact.html, and this will be contact us. Now that we've defined the, the settings links, last thing we'll need to do is to let's set up the actual Chrome control itself. New s sp.ui.controls.navigation in, uh, in that method will actually provide two different properties. The first one will be what is the element that will contain the Chrome control and we'll set up an element called Chrome control container and the second is, what are the options? And the options is this object that we just defined a moment ago. So we'll provide that as the options. Last, we need to tell it to set visible, true. And we're done with the scripting portion. Now let's go back to our page. We have a default.aspx page, and the this ASPX page by default already inherits the, um, the, the Chrome control. So what we'd like to do to demonstrate is we'll just delete this page and we'll just use an HTML page to show that there is no hidden plumbing or anything like that that will provide any any benefit. This is just a plain HTML page called home.html and we have the doc type HTML HTML, so this is going to be an XML, uh, XHTML document. We have the head title, so on the title let's say Chrome Control Demo and then in the body, we'll need to provide the container for the Chrome control. And that was, if we go back to our script, that was this right here, this, this uh, Chrome control container. So we'll use that as the ID of the element that will actually contain the Chrome control. And now we referenced um, the Chrome control uh, script through our app.js script. So we'll need to add a reference to that app.js and our uh, our script also referenced jQuery script so let's add in jQuery reference in here as well and and we might also want to add in styles for our app so if we had any custom styles we just add a reference to the style sheet for our app as well last thing is we'd like to provide the body of our app so rather than type everything out we'll just paste and kind of walk through what are we showing. The Chrome control will inherit the styles of the host web. So if we set the, um, we have a H1 element here, we can use this class MS Accent Text and we'll be able to use the same styles as the host web and we'll see that in play in just a moment. 
We also have the uh, MS Accent text style class for the H2 element, and then we can see what will it look like without any styles. Now, one interesting thing that you'll see whenever we render this page, so let's hit F5 and we'll see that we don't quite get the, um, the layout that we expect. So we hit F5 and Visual Studio then installs the app, uploads it, and then it uh, launches, uh, launches the debugger on Internet Explorer. First you can see we deleted the default.aspx page so we'll need to change the app to point to that page. So let's go down to the app manifest. And the second is even after we make that page we'll see that the Chrome control won't quite render as expected. So again we hit F5, we install the app, upload it, Internet Explorer is launched and then we'll see that the interface looks not quite as expected. And the reason for this is because I currently have this app is in the intranet zone. And in the intranet zone, the default rendering for this is IE7, which is quirks mode. And you can see that if we go to the, the F12 and look at the developer tools, you can see the document mode is in fact IE7 standards mode and we're using IE10 Compat View. And if we change this to use, say, IE8, now the page renders just fine. So if we wanted to then ensure that the Chrome control renders correctly using at least IE8 mode, then we'll need to add that into our page. So let's go into home.html. And the way that you do that is just by adding in here, you go meta, and there's even a, a a uh, code completion snippet for meta IE8 tab tab and that generates the XUA compatible HTTP equiv for content IE8 and now when we run we hit F5 we install the app and then when the browser is launched we'll be able to see that in fact it renders correctly with the app icon and the uh, title for our app so the next thing we'll want to do is add in a few more pages so that was an example of how we can use that programmatically to be able to use the Chrome control. Now let's see how we can use it declaratively. I'll add in a, a few new items here. Let's go into web, go into HTML, and we'll call this account HTML, and then I'll copy, paste, and paste. And this one will be contact, and this one will be help. In account.html, let's go to account call this account settings and inside here what we'll want to do is instead of using our app.js to programmatically load up use git script and be able to you set the options all of that programmatically this time what we'll do is we'll actually directly reference spui controls.js so using that that script reference now what we'll do is we'll set up our, the chrome control declaratively We'll still call it our Chrome Control Container, and now we'll set some additional properties here. The first property that we'll set will be data-ms-control, and we'll set that equal to sp.ui.controls.navigation, and that will let the uh, Chrome Control know that we're going to load that Chrome Control into this container, and then we can set the options for that control. And the options here will be a JavaScript object, just like we did previously. And inside that object, we'll want to set the properties. The first property we'll need to set is called site URL. And that tells it what is the site that we'll be downloading the Chrome control from, or it actually using, downloading the theme information from. So the site URL for, for my example will be HTTP intranet.contoso.com. The next property that we'll set up will be uh, similar to what we did in a moment ago in the app.js. We'll actually be able to even reference and just grab all of these right here. So now we have the same thing that we had previously, the app help page URL, the settings links, and then here we'll just get rid of that script. And we'll get rid of this script since we're in the string value for the attribute. So we have account HTML, contact HTML. And now, um, since we've defined the site URL, 
and the help page URL and also the settings links other things we can add are like the app icon URL and the app title so we'll go back to the app app.js copy those and paste so now we have the app title the app icon URL page site URL and settings links if we scroll down then we can also ensure that the um, that everything is formatted correctly so we have the the start of the options we'll go down there's the settings link settings links and now finally we see that we do in fact have one extra open open bracket there so this bracket goes to here and we should be good now that we've defined the chrome control container now we can define the rest of the visual structure for our page so i'll just copy some html here so we have some legacy html from a previous system that we were using that has cell spacing cell padding and Visual Studio lets us know that if we hover over that it's not a valid attribute for HTML5 so we can just grab those and delete those and that provides the rest of the visual structure so we hit save and now the next thing we'll do is we'll hit F5 and Visual Studio will then uh, install the app launch uh, Internet Explorer attach the debugger and now this time we should be able to go to account settings and see the Chrome control app. Again though, notice that we get the experience of having the icons misaligned. And again, that's because we're back to IE7 standards mode. To influence that on each page, we're going to need to make sure inside the, inside the head that we set the meta IE8 tab. Hit F5 one last time. And this time the app will be, uh, will render correctly. So that was an example of using the Chrome control declaratively. And again, if we go to account settings, we'll be able to see now that everything aligns correctly. Let's go back to the site quickly and let's go to site settings and we'll change the look and change the look for the host web. And when we change the look for the host web, let's pick something uh, that will completely change the rendering here. We're going to say try it out and it's working on it. And then finally, yes, keep it. So now our host web, the style has been drastically changed. Let's go back to the site contents, scroll down and we can see there's our Chrome app. Let's see how our Chrome app was affected. And we can see in fact that the Chrome app in our, in our uh, home.html page that we use programmatically with the Chrome control has in fact changed the look and feel based on the look and feel of the host web. And now let's check our declarative implementation under account settings. And sure enough, under account settings, we see that uh, using the declarative approach has also changed as well. So that was an example of using the Chrome control both programmatically and declaratively. In this section, we looked at how to use the Chrome control to provide navigation and styling capabilities for our app. In the new app model, we won't have the navigation capabilities for SharePoint that you may be familiar with, so you'll need to build those navigation capabilities in. The Chrome control provides the ability for you to add navigation capabilities, styling, and to use a consistent header for your page that looks and feels like it's part of the SharePoint site. Music